Uh, so a little demonstration that it's all about where the temperature gradient is and not about where the junction is. Uh, I've got a little demonstration here. We've got uh, a very isothermal oil bar set at the moment at 130 degrees. We've got uh, two platinum resistance thermometers inserting there, uh, measuring on the through here, measuring 130 degrees. And then I have a process calibrator connected to a type T thermocouple at the moment, which is inserted in the oil bar. And you can hopefully clearly see that the portion of the thermocouple that's entering the oil, just down here, is indeed the type T thermocouple. So all appears to be well. Uh, the oil is at 129 degrees, 129.9 degrees, and we're reading about 129.9 on the process elevator here. Now, as I pull the thermocouple out of the oil, you can see that in actual fact what we have joined to it is not continuously a type T thermocouple, we have a type J thermocouple welded to it part of the way down. Which hopefully you can just about see where it comes out of the oil. Where the wire has changed from brown to black. If we look at the process calibrator, the reading on that is starting to go into quite a large area now, it's 135 degrees. And this will take a few minutes to stabilise. I'll just Okay, so we're just coming up to uh, five minutes to the stabilisation time there. And we can see we've got quite a significant error in here now. The oil's still at 129.9 degrees, but now our thermocouple is reading uh, 148 degrees, pretty much. Uh, obviously what we've done is we've introduced quite a significant error into the character of the thermocouple cable in the area of the temperature gradient. In other words, where it exits the oil and comes out the outside air. The type T thermocouple now has almost zero temperature gradient. To it. it starts here, goes back to the instrument. So if I just go to the process calibrator and change the settings of it to measure the type J thermocouple, which is what now is in the area of temperature gradient, and hopefully you can see on there that that's measuring uh, 129 degrees. Of course, there's still a small amount of temperature gradient on the Type 2 thermocouple, but now where we know where the temperature gradient is and the character of the cable where the temperature gradient is, the calibrator is now reading correctly. So it's all about where the, the character of the cable, where it experiences the temperature gradient. So just to illustrate the point a little further, we uh, pull the type the thermal cup out a little further and it's no longer type J but type K in the area of the temperature gradient. And you can see that coming out of the uh, tank down there. It's changed from black to green, so type J, IEC type J to IEC type K. Uh, in the area where the oil, uh, the boundary between the oil at 130 degrees and the air at about 20 degrees in the room. And already the reading on our process calibrator is starting to go into error. What I do, I'm just going to clear and restart the timer and get another five minutes to stabilise at this temperature. So, without fiddling with the 
quiet there. Okay, so we've given that five minutes to stabilise again, and there's an error now uh, on the reading again. The process calibrator is measuring uh, 107 degrees, when we know the thermocouple exiting the oil bath is actually at 130 degrees, except that it's now type K, not type J, so we've got a significant error in the character of the cable. Uh, what I'll do again is just uh, modify the calibrator so that it knows that it's now type K thermocouple, And a Presto is now reading uh, 131 degrees. Again, because now the Type J cable uh, does not have temperature gradient or very little. Almost all of the temperature gradient is in the Type K thermocouple, and that's the cable we need to know the character of in order to get an accurate measurement. Uh, and last of all, we pull the Type J thermocouple out. Type, sorry, Type K thermocouple out further. And we get to a type N. Pulls out here. Pulls out the way. So now the cable in the area of the temperature gradient is type N. Because our calibrator thinks it's type K, we've introduced a significant error in the character of the cable again, more than you'd experience in real life, of course. Uh, and you can see the reading's already starting to. Uh, going to error. So we'll start the timer again, give it five minutes and see what happens to the reading. Okay, well that reading is pretty stable there on the uh, press calibrator. It's, uh, it's about 99 degrees. Uh, thinking it's reading type K, of course we've got type J, and then a piece of type T, and then a piece of type K, all of which are all very negligible temperature gradient across, and of course there's still some heat coming off of the uh, oil bar here. But, uh, See, obviously, a significant error there because it's actually a temperature gradient in the portion of type N thermocouple that's uh, in the boundary between the oil at 130 degrees and the ambient air temperature. So now I'll just swap the calibrator to type N. And then we have reading, uh, reading 133 degrees, so it's pretty close there. So obviously a bit of heat being given off around the, uh, the thermocouples there. And if I pull that all the way out, you can see that uh, that's the end of it there. Just the, uh, you can just about see that, the type J therm, type N thermocouple at the end where the junction is. But as I think I've shown there, the um, junction is not terribly important when you're trying to get uh, an accurate reading. What's most critical trying to track down errors is to make sure that you know what the character of the cable is where there is a temperature gradient. 